It's time to plant your fall garden, but not before you've completed a few crucial steps. I'll go over what those steps are in this video. Hey, I'm Brian with Next Level Gardening. If you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help take your garden to the next level, you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. So I worked really hard at the new homestead and got all this area behind me completely landscaped and ready for this video. Just kidding, not even close. I'm actually we're back up at our old stomping grounds, visiting family for the long weekend, and we're in Tammy's backyard. However, if you haven't gone over and subscribed to my new homestead channel, please do that. Next level homesteading, I'll put a link down below. So let me know in the comments if you're planting a fall garden and let me know what you've done to prepare or what you've done in the past to prepare the beds. The very first thing you need to do is take stock of what happened in your garden this summer. Did you have disease in one bed, major pests in another, maybe some uh, an area was a little more shade than you thought it was going to be? You need to remember those things in order to plan next year's summer garden. And if you're like me, you're not gonna just remember it. So just take those notes as the season winds down and it's still fresh in your mind. Because if you had blight in one bed, you definitely don't wanna to plant tomatoes or potatoes and possibly even peppers and eggplant there next year. You wanna rotate those around. It gives some time for that, those diseases to die out before you plant the same susceptible plants back in there. If you have too much shade in one bed, take note of that. Next year, don't plant sun lovers in there. Plant things like leafy greens and root vegetables who can deal with a little bit of shade. Once that's out of the way, then you can actually get out there and get some work done. And you wanna start by you know, removing all of the leaf litter and debris from the summer plants. Get them out of there because they might be carrying disease and you don't want them sitting in your bed for next year. Then just lightly rake over the soil, level it off, clean it up a little bit, get the, uh, the very top of the soil kind of ground up a little bit. And then every two times a year, spring and fall, I put on two uh, inches of a good organic mulch on top of my beds. It tops them up because over the year, you're gonna notice your bed is gonna sink. If you've got uh, good compost in there, it's gonna break down and you're always gonna be losing a little bit of organic matter and inches of your soil. So twice a year, I put two inches right on top. I don't work it in. I do uh, practice no dig. And over the next six months or so, the worms are gonna pull that down into the soil itself. So you're not gonna have to worry about doing the work. Let them do it for you. It's much easier. It's also gonna create a physical barrier between any disease left in the soil and your new plants. Not to mention, keep weeds down, keep moisture in, all that good stuff we need. Now, you don't have to wait to plant. You can just plant your new plants right into that compost. You don't have to wait for it to be mixed up by the worms. Just plant right into it, and they're going to take off and do really well. And then if you want to, you can add another layer of mulch right on top of that around your plants. Pine needles, straw, anything that's going to further you know, keep the weeds down and keep the moisture in. Now, if I have not inspired you to start a fall garden, then my life is worthless. But if you're not planting a fall garden, you at least need to plant a cover crop. Cover crops are non-harvestable plants that we put over our beds and they protect the soil during winter. They can actually, choosing the right cover crops can benefit the soil. They can help break it up. If you have a thick, heavy, maybe clay soil, they can also, if you pick a legume crop like a hairy vetch or a crimson clover, they can put nitrogen into the soil for your next crop to take advantage of. And then as you cut them down, which I'll get to in a second, you will need to cut them down, mow them over, uh, if you leave them on top of the beds, they become a green manure or a mulch that further uh, benefits the soil. When your beds lie unused, even for a season, they start to, the soil life in it starts to break down. Erosion can happen. And erosion is not something that just happens on a mountainside or on a large farm. It happens even in raised beds. Cover crop foliage 
actually protects the ground from heavy rains. It softens those the raindrops so they don't erode the soil. It actually also, the roots hold the soil together. So even if the rains are heavy and they get in there, they don't wash it all away because the roots are hanging on to it. Continuing to add organic matter and cover crops to your soil will help the soil life continue to break down nutrients, make them available for your plants. And if you plant, like I said, the right cover crops, their roots, actually all cover crops do this, some to a deeper degree than others, but their roots grow down through heavy soil that is even hard to, to shovel They'll grow down there throughout the season. And then once they, the plants die and those roots decay, worms, other soil life, water can make their way into those little tunnels that the roots made and start to break up the soil at a deeper level. So if you have compacted soil, cover crops are a must. Unless you wanna get out there and really start to work it Put your back into it some good old elbow grease but why not just let nature do its thing now cover crops are usually sown in early spring or in fall and there are cool season and warm season cover crops to choose from you sow the seeds you let them grow through their life cycle until they start to flower at that point and this is absolutely crucial for a few reasons you cut them down before they go to seed the, the number one reason is because at that point in their life cycle, when they are starting to produce flowers, but before they produce seeds, they're at their zenith. They have more nutrients in them. They're the healthiest they will be. They have the, the most impact on the soil at that moment, both in the cut uh, remnants that you leave on the soil and in their roots if you're using a leguminous plant like a clover, a pea, a hairy vetch. Once they go past that point, they're gonna drop their seeds and become a huge problem that you're gonna be taking care of for years. They're gonna be a, a weed. Um, <clears throat> so cut them down at the time of bloom, but before they set their seed. Uh, also, also with the leguminous plants that uh, fix nitrogen in their soil, they will not have started really using up that nitrogen at the time of bloom. So when you cut them down, all the nitrogen that they've created in the soil is now available for the next actual crop that you're gonna be harvesting. So my favorite cover crops are, uh, well, it's always been Crimson Clover. I'm gonna be trying Harry Vetch this year for the first time. And you all remember our good friend, Harry Vetch. Now, I did want to mention, because somebody pointed out that hairy vetch is poisonous to dogs. And so if you have dogs that like to munch on your plants, you might not want to use hairy vetch or keep them confined or keep it confined to an area your dogs don't go in. After the cover crops are cut down, their roots continue to be habitat for mycorrhizal fungi. It's a really um, beneficial fungus that inhabits all the roots of your soil all the roots of your plants throughout your soil and creates a internet in the soil that allows plants to communicate, share nutrients and things like that. So it keeps, it keeps them going throughout the winter when there aren't really plants growing. It also becomes food for your beneficial bacteria, other bacteria, soil life such as worms, beetles, all the good stuff that's gonna keep your soil going throughout the winter. Now there are some cover crops that work better for large farms and some that are better for the home garden. So let me go through my top three cover crops for the home gardener. Number one is my all time favorite, Crimson Clover. It is cool season and warm season and it is it, it grows like a nice ornamental plant. Um, so if you have it here and there throughout your, your garden where you don't have plants growing or it could just be over the entire bed it just is a very nice looking rich green plant that has absolutely beautiful blooms that the bees love. It's cold hardy. It go, it's, it's hardy down to zero degrees Fahrenheit or 18 degrees Celsius. So in a lot of winters, it can just grow right through the winter. Now I know what you're thinking. I pull clover out of my garden all the time. It's a nuisance. Why would I plant it willingly? Well, this is where the timing of cutting it down comes in. If you cut it down before it blooms, it's done. It's not coming back. It won't even grow back from the roots. If you cut it all the way to the ground uh, and it will not produce seed and be a nuisance. It's done as of that season. 
If you don't cut it down, you're gonna have a problem. So don't let those beautiful crimson flowers seduce you. Give them a couple of days for the bees and then cut it down. They will not have produced their seed and you're done with that. You can leave the foliage laying right on the ground, plant right through it. Now you've got a built-in mulch that's gonna continue to add nutrients to the soil as it breaks down. Another really cold hardy plant that you can use as a cover crop is winter rye. It can live at temperatures down to minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 34 Celsius. You wanna sow it in the fall and it's gonna grow very slowly over the winter. You might not see much growth at all, but as soon as the weather starts to warm up just a little bit in early spring, it's gonna take off. As with crimson clover, you wanna cut it down as it starts to bloom, unless you want to turn your garden space into a lawn. One great benefit that winter rye has is its allelopathic effects. If you cut down your winter rye and leave it on top of the soil, as it breaks down, it produces allelopathic chemicals that will help prevent the germination of weed seeds in that area. Now, that's a great thing. However, you just gotta be aware that when you plant seeds of your vegetables in that area, it's also gonna inhibit the sprouting of those as well. Not so much on big seeds like beans, peas, corn, that kind of thing, but smaller seeds. So just make sure you handle this in one of two ways. Number one, you wait until the residue or the, the, the plant material is completely brown. It's gonna have now stopped producing those chemicals or just plant directly into it transplants that you start indoors or you buy from the garden center. It's not going to have an effect on those. It's just seed germination that's the issue. Now, hairy vetch is very similar to clover. They're both a legume, so they both fix nitrogen in the soil. The one advantage that hairy vetch has over clover is for disease-prone plants like potatoes, tomatoes, that type of thing that maybe get something like blight. Research has shown that having hairy vetch residue, every time I say residue, what I'm talking about is the plant material that you cut down and leave there. That actually reduces disease for the crop that's planted in the area afterwards. So once you have that hairy vetch cut down, plant your tomatoes or potatoes right into it and you might just steer clear of blight this year. Okay, so how do you plant and use cover crops? The time to plant is usually in fall, about four to six weeks before cold weather really arrives, like your freezing temperatures. Um, that's going to let them get established a little bit before they either die or slow way down during the winter. And generally you can buy uh, cover crop seed in larger like containers or bags. It's not just a little seed packet and just broadcast it over the area and water it in if you don't have a rain coming. The rest, it takes care of itself. Now in winters that you have that are really cold that will kill it, you don't have to worry about mowing it down. But if you don't have those winters or if you're planting in spring, make sure you mow those down or cut them down to the ground as they bloom. You can let them bloom for a couple of days, but you don't want them to start producing seed. Now, once you've cut them down, you can do two different things with them. You can either leave them on top of the soil as a mulch, I guess three things. You can also put them in the compost bin, or if you're not a no dig gardener, you can turn them under uh, with a rototiller or a shovel and give it about four weeks for them to start breaking down a little bit before you plant into that area. During that four to six weeks, as they're being incorporated into the soil, it actually will inhibit plant growth because they're, they're breaking down, they're pulling nitrogen, um, and it, it's kind of like when you plant into wood chips, like in mixed in the ground, you don't wanna do that. It's just gonna mess up the whole thing. So give it four to six weeks after you turn them under or just leave them on the top of the ground or just compost them. I hope all of this preparation prepares your garden for a really great start next spring. But what I really hope is that you're starting a fall garden right now and we'll use this cover crop information in late winter or early spring so you can get a full crop right now, have a quick, 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 short season of cover cropping in the spring, and then resume your planting uh, after that. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And let me know what you learned. I would love to know that as well. And I'll see you guys next time.